Okay, so we're going to try something different. I'm going to try to record this um, talk about the bandsaw, and we'll see if this works a little bit better than me bringing you guys all back in groups. Uh, so for your next step in this first year project, it is time to uh, work with the bandsaw, and that is where you're going to kind of make that lap joint. I don't know if we can get the camera to see this here. So I kind of laid out the X's I'm going to cut out there and there. So you get the idea, I'm going to cut those out so that those then eventually fit together to make the lap joint, which is connecting parts E and D on the left hand side of our project, okay? Uh, so for the bandsaw, basically characterize the bandsaw because the blade goes all the way around the wheels and makes a complete loop, thereby making a band. So it's known as the bandsaw. Uh, safety on the bandsaw is really quite easy. There's not a lot to it that we have to worry about. We're holding all the different directions. The board lays flat on the table. Uh, so it's not like the table saw where you're having to push into the fence, down and through. Really, it sits on the table. The cutting force happens down into the table. And all you're doing is kind of steering the wood through your cut. Um, <clears throat> this is a 20 inch bandsaw. It's known as a 20 inch bandsaw. <laughs> because it is 20 inches from the wheel to the other side of the wheel, the diameter. So that gives us 20 inches of cutting depth here from this arm over here out to our blade. <clears throat> um, this one has a break that we'll kind of pick up and show you a little bit later. I want to go into some details of our other bandsaw, but that's kind of the overview of what the bandsaw is and how this one works. Okay. So now this one, if we kind of zoom back out here, this is our 20 inch bandsaw, or excuse me, our 14 inch bandsaw. That was the one we just talked about. Here's the 14 inch bandsaw. Same setup here. It's got the wheel across. And so from this side to this side is where we get our 14 inches. That's why it's known that way. We have our band all the way around to cut with. Um, the only difference in the two machines, really, is on our 20 inch bandsaw, which is the big one. If you look down there, there's that foot pedal right there. Once you've turned it off with the button over here, once you turn that off, and instead of letting it just spin forever, you can step on that little kind of lever down there, that foot brake, and that's going to put pressure on the wheel, and that will break the whole system and slow the wheel down pretty quickly. Uh, on this one, um, we just have our on and off. It tends to slow down a little bit faster because it's not quite as big. So as far as setup goes, depending on what kind of wood you're cutting, Sorry, I'm grabbing another board here. You know, this is an inch and a quarter because that's the same as our project. Here's, a, you know, something that's much thinner to cut. The only adjustment that we do for every cut is we come back here on the back side of the bandsaw. This is the back of our 20 inch bandsaw. And right here, we're talking about this lever. Okay. On the 14 inch bandsaw, it's in the same location on the back side, except it's this black knob instead of the lever. All we're going to do is loosen that up, okay? So you want to hold down there and loosen that up. And I'm going to stop this so that I don't drop the fence, the guard. Okay, so here is the adjustment that we make for every cut that we do. You take your material, whatever you're cutting, in this case this is a scrap piece from the wood that we're using on this first project. I'm going to kind of slide it behind there and hold the guard. I loosen this up, lefty loosey, and that allows my guard to go up and down now. I want to take it down so that it touches the board, okay, so it's resting on there. And then I raise it back up about a quarter of an inch so that it's just barely above what we're cutting there, okay. So it's just kind of hovering. I can fit just about one finger in between there, and then I lock it back down, okay. That's what we want it to be. I see lots of students, somebody else will have cut something, and it's raised like this, and they just come and start cutting. We don't want any more blade revealed than we have to have. So that's why we loosen it for every cut that we do. Again, about a quarter inch or a fingertip width above our material. If I was doing this thin one, I would do the same thing and it'd be much lower. And that's, we do that whether it's on uh, our 14 inch machine down there, I would do the same thing. Or whether it's on our 20 inch machine right here, same thing. Okay, so we're ready to make a cut here now. This is our big 20 inch bandsaw. You can see that the thickness of the blade is much bigger than on our 14 inch bandsaw. And so on this piece, when all I have to do is take out this one square, it's just going to be a series of basically straight cuts. 
I'm going to go right down here and back out. And then I'm going to come right in here and back out. And so there's not a lot of curtering and, and things like that that we need to do. The wider the blade is from the teeth to the back of it, the straighter it is that it's going to cut. The skinnier that blade is, then we can start doing some curvy cuts and things like that. For this project, we've only got to do straight cuts. So I apologize this is going to be loud. You may want to turn your volume down now, but I'm going to go ahead and try to cut this one. As far as safety goes, I want to keep my fingers back away. Obviously, I don't want to go into it, but you can still get pretty close to this machine and feel pretty safe because it is not much else going on here. So here we go. Well, I guess let's kind of talk here quickly. You're going to see me literally come in right here, straight back down. Once I'm in the cut, I can't twist it at all because the blade will get bit pinched. And then I'm going to back straight out. And then on this way, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come right down. And, we're, and then that piece will be free and I can kind of take it away. All right? So no need for relief cuts or anything like that. I think we got a little bit better angle here. Okay. I'm trying to have the saw blade go out of so the width of the saw blade is out of the scrap side all right and just that inside of it touches my good line And straight back out. So there's the one cut, and now the other cut just needs to come in and right back out that way. So I turned it off, I'm now pressing the foot blake brake to slow it down a little bit faster. Once it's totally stopped, now I can grab my piece out of there. And there's the beginning of our lap joint. Okay, so now we have our 14 inch bandsaw, which you can see the blade here is much narrower. And that will allow me some more maneuverability if I needed to make some curve cuts. For your first year project, all I'm doing is cutting that out so that uh, this piece can then fit right in there. All right, so I've already obviously previously laid this out. Um, I've already set up the guide to be just above my material. And so we're ready to make our cut here. This one runs a little bit quieter. And you're gonna make a series of cuts. Basically the idea is to go down the side and down the side. So I get to my bottom line, I'm gonna back straight out of each cut. I can't just make my saw go through there because I'm gonna cut off the piece that I need. So I'm going to work at cutting that out by doing some angles, and you'll see that in just a second. The blade is lined up in the waist side of my cut. All right, until I get to that bottom line, and then I back out. Bottom line and back straight out, not twisting it, straight back out of there, okay? So here's what I have cut now. And now the idea is, I'm gonna go from like up there kind of, and I'm gonna try to hit down here in this corner a little bit, okay? So there's the cut path I'm gonna try to make. I start out flat at first, just to make a small indentation at the top and then it's easier for my blade to get a grip on where I'm going. And I slow down a lot down here because I don't want to cut into my edge. So it just breaks free, then I can back it out of there. Use the board to get your scrap pieces out. Don't use your finger, it's not worth it. Okay, so now the idea is I'm gonna bring my blade all the way down here and then kind of try to cut into this a little bit, all right? Okay, 
And now, I've got to make kind of a curved cut. I need to start here and curve into this. Anytime we're making a curved cut, we need relief cuts. So relief cuts just go in and back out. That's probably enough for where I'm going to be making my cut. So I'm starting there. And I'm trying to just get perfectly into that corner in there. Alright, and now I'm going to go back the other way. Now that pops out, then I'm going to go one last final direction. This is a good thing to notice. See that piece that's stuck in there? That's going to bother my piece when I try to, my, my uh, good piece, when I try to drive it through there. It's going to get stuck on that scrap. So I turn it off real quick, wait for the blade to stop, fish it out, <clears throat> and now I can turn it on and just resume what I was doing here. So I'm just cleaning up the bottom of this a little bit. A scraping cut there. Turn it off. There's that. There's that. And my lap joint is now complete. And that's what you guys will be doing. One last thing when you are all done with your uh, cuts. Of course we grab our scrap. Brush that into our hands. And then this can go in the scrap barrel. Um, I guess I should also mention, I'm going to tell you this in class as well, but uh, it's a good idea to make several, these are just scrap pieces, not your real pieces, good idea to make several practice cuts on scrap things that you can get from the barrel before you actually start cutting your real things, because if you mess up on the real things, you got to start over. So I, I suggest getting some scrap out of the barrels, practice. Um, on my practice, I tried to simulate the exact size that I would need in order to make my lap joint. <clears throat> and so that's why I chose those. Practice, practice, practice before you start cutting your real things though.